And so um, next on this jam-packed Flower Monthly, we are joined today by Shinji Chu. She is a PhD student in the University, University of Cambridge. And uh, she's been doing something completely different with Flower um, to, versus what we just heard about iOS. She's been looking at how you can uh, use Flower to tackle what is this very um, thorny but commonly occurring problem in real world situations. And that's this class of problem um, called vertical federated learning, where the um, where the format and the, where the, the data structures required to learn across are not uniform across all clients. And so um, she's been looking at this with uh, others at Cambridge on how this can apply to financial data. They've come up with some really interesting, powerful ideas on how you can use Flow to tackle these problems and had a lot of success in applying these things to um, financial type of data. And so um, I'm so happy that she can join us today to um, show us uh, what she's been up to. And um, with that, um, thank you, Shinti, for joining us. And the, the floor is yours. Hi, everyone. My name is Shinti. Uh, I'm from Machine Learning System Lab from University of Cambridge. And today I would like to talk about vertical FL using financial data. Our solution is participating in the UK-US PET Tried Challenge competition this year in January. And we have won first place. Um, so first, let me briefly talk about the challenge and the problem we are facing here. Uh, machine learning solutions are widely used in the finance sector, especially for the financial crime detection, such as the anti-money laundry or fraudulent transaction detections. But for fundamental bottleneck in applying these machine learning methods is the demand for large amount of data to be collected in one single location during the training time which can be a deal breaker for financial applications, such because the data is very sensitive, it involves a lot of the private information of each account and each transaction, and because different legal restrictions like that happen around the world, and it, which uh, can prevent the data from different institutions to be collected and stored in one place. The goal for this problem is to use federated learning for financial fraud detections for each transaction uh, using the synthetic data provided by SWIFT and different banks. Uh, however, only using the federated learning is not going to guarantee the privacy or the security of the raw or original data from different attacks from the malicious clients, as we might see from a lot of literatures that the malicious client can do different kinds of attack, rather, uh, for example, the data reconstruction attack or inference attack. Therefore, we are designing a solution with different, uh, different privacy-preserving method to mathematically mathematically guarantee the security of the raw data. Uh, for, federal, uh, for vertical federal learning, uh, what exactly is vertical federal learning? Uh, different from what we usually see in the literature on experiment, which is what we usually call horizontal federal learning. That means that the clients will have the same feature space, but different clients will have different sample IDs or or for example, like this, if we petition CIFA or families that like we previously see, that we petition each image in, and, and, then put, uh, and then send to different clients, but you know, each image will have the same feature space. But for the vertical FL, on the other hand, client might have different features stored in their local data set, and the label might only be stored in one particular client and not existing in all clients. So in, to explain in more details about the data set we are facing here, our data set has two, two different kinds of institutions. One is called SWIFT, which has all the transaction data with the features such as the transaction date, transaction currency, uh, the sender bank, the receiver bank, or the transaction amount, et cetera. And other kind of institutions are banks, which can, uh, which can be multiple banks across the world. For the banks, each bank will have a specific information for specific accounts that they may have different indications of, about the activity of the accounts and may have the flags about the abnormality of the accounts, which might help in the fraud detections. And also for this particular account, uh, for this particular data set, the label only exists in the suite, which has all the transaction data set. Uh, so in terms of the model we are using, our main solution consists of the two parts. 
The first part involves a pre-training phase in the SWIFT because it has all the transaction information and the label. The pre-training models allow us to extract valuable information or embeddings from the raw data without directly sharing any private information with the server or other uh, or third parties such as banks. And in the second part, we use a logistic regression to train the final predictions uh, for this particular data set. And it can be easily replaced with any other neural network based model in the future. But here, because of this particular data set, we use the simple model and we use the logistic regression. Uh, and then it comes to the more important part, which, in the, which is the security part of the solutions. We utilize the concept of secure aggregation of federated learning. And it, uh, firstly, we will need a setup phase for the key exchange for all clients. We use the ECDH key agreement protocol to generate a shared secret through insecure channels between clients and the aggregator, which is the server. The shared secrets will be used to build a secure pairwise channels for symmetric encryption and facilitate the secure aggregation. During the setup phase, the central aggregator on the server will request the public key for all the participating clients and the SWIFT, and then all the banks or ants the SWIFT will, will, uh, will send back their public keys and the server will broadcast their public keys to all the participating clients. Then it comes to the training phase. Uh, the first step, uh, the training phase has uh, three main steps. The first step is the mini batch selections. Uh, since Swift clients has all the information regarding each transaction and the ground truth label, the mini batch selections will start from Swift. It will then uh, first select a batch of data of which each data records will have the ordinary account, which is the sender and the beneficiary account, which is the receiver for each account uh, for each transaction. And at least will uh, cooperating in uh, these specific banks might and these two banks might be different banks. And then Swift will then upload the encrypted batch to an aggregator, which will broadcast to all the bank clients. As the account numbers are encrypted using different keys, each bank client can, can only decrypt account numbers existing in their own local data set, which prevent any other party from knowing actual information about the batch and accounts and actual information in it. And then it, it comes to the forward pass. Since the logistic regression requires all the information from the SWIFT, the sender banks and the receiver bank to compute and then to make the final predictions. Uh, in this here, we, we, uh, we follow in the idea of the secure aggregation, which is by adding the noise to each input of the logistic re regression, but we make sure like the noise we add are canceled out after the summation. So the ultimate result after the summation will be the same without any, without any noise, which guarantee the result uh, like won't be affected by adding the noise. But since we're adding the noise, that like each individual's uh, if if there's a malicious client intercept the uh, transact uh, uh, the data set transfer from the clients to the uh, server, they cannot reconstruct the original data because of the because of the least added noise. And then we back uh, and then we come to the backward pass. We decide to share the label with each transaction as label is not ID identifiable. Since if you only know the labels like it's only one or zero, you cannot reconstruct anything. So we share the labels in, for each transaction with the encryption as well. So each only the banks with this mini badge will have the label. And then we can compute the gradients in each client and also with, with the noise. And with the same idea as the secure aggregation and the forward pass, the gradients will be canceled out after the summation of the mini batch. So that the summed gradients for the mini, mini batch will not be affected by the noise. But so when, the S, when, when we do the SGD, it will be accurate. However, even with the, uh, however, even the third party on the malicious clients uh, intercept on the gradients, it will still be masked with the noise, so you cannot reconstruct any private information existing in the bank. Uh, so to summarize, uh, the advantage of our solutions mainly has four parts. The first part is because we use secure aggregation and encryption, our method protect the original data completely because of the noise we added. To reduce the risk of information leakage, we also use the uh, 
the first stage of the uh, first stage training in the SWIFT because if we do the embedding extraction, it, it will be adding one more layers. So it will be make it even harder to reconstruct the original features. And because we use this mask uh, gradient and the mask input, it is, it is impossible to reconstruct the original data or make the inference about the sensitive information in the data set without knowing the mask or without knowing the noise. Therefore, our method protects the model from both late table, uh, data reconstruction or the membership inference attack. Our method all also have the minimal degradation from the centralized solutions. As you might know, with feather learning, usually there will be a gap between centralized performance and FL performance due to the process of the Fed average or the statistical heterogeneity of each client. However, because of a solution, the forward pass and the backward pass are done per mini batch, which will be essentially the same as the centralized training. And because the mask we added and the noise we added are cancel out each other. Uh, so during the summation, the final number will not be affected by the noise, which means less optimal performance won't be impacted by adding the noise or adding these security layers. Uh, thirdly, our solution stands out from others because it offers the most uh, efficient approach to data encryption. We are not directly encrypting uh, the, imp the input to the logistic regression or directly uh, encrypt the gradients, which will be very computational and communicational expensive. Our method is is uh, it's very efficient. And the final result are decrypted very naturally through the summations. Like I said before, it would naturally cancel out each other to get an ultimate accurate result. Uh, lastly, our method is model agnostic. For this particular data set, we use uh, SGBoost for the pre-training phase and the logistic regression for the second stage. However, however these two can also be replaced with any more uh, other models for uh, uh, if we are uh, switching to other data sets or if we have more advanced models in the future for this particular data set, it, which can be easily to re easily replaced as well. We are also working to make our model more generalized to all different kinds of data set and to all kinds of vertical FL settings in the future to make it work for all different kinds of scenarios. Uh, many thanks everyone for listening. And here's my email address in case you have any questions. I'm also in the Flower Slack channel if you if you want to uh, contact me or if you have any questions in the future. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Sinchi. This is a um, this is a great piece of work I think from you and the, the rest of the folks involved. Uh, in particular, what I really like about this example is it um, it hammers home this point that some people have, which is they think, oh, federated learning out of the box is going to be, you know, privacy preserving. And then maybe they, they don't realize that you need to add in different types of measures. And then beyond that, they start to think, oh, well, I just have to add in differential privacy or segregation. They treat them like they're just little boxes you add into the mix. But whereas, in fact, federated learning is an opportunity to make something secure, whereby you have to think very carefully about the overall design. And I like the fact that you're using other types of primitives. You've got encryption in there you thought very carefully about which pieces of data and how sensitive are they and how are they going to interact at the various stages of the learning process. And so I think this is a really great blueprint of how people should think about securing a piece of federated learning, um, where you think about the task, you think about the data types, you think about a, a, a wide palette of technical solutions and then apply them as and where they are needed. So yeah, this is, this is great. And then the vertical federated learning piece is really important too. We, we get asked a lot about how do you handle cases where not every client has identical um, data structures and, and the model uh, attributes of each client. And so um, this is really a great, important work. Um, so thank, thank you for today. That was a great presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you for <laughs> inviting me.